What are the identifying marks of Christ's church? What are these things that regardless of, of how large or potentially even small, depending on what point in history we are, what are the marks that are there that point out, that identify Christ's church? Well, that's the question that we're asking today and we're looking at in our daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It's Friday, October 23rd, 2020. Thankful that you're here with us for another devotion as we seek to better understand in this little mini-season uh, more about Jesus' church. Well, let's start off in God's Word as we try and normally do almost every time because that is the standard upon which we uh, are to live and knowing the great truth that God exists, He is the creator, ruler, and sustainer of all things, it would only make sense that we would desire to know what He has said as we turn to His Word. So we're going to the New Testament, into the book of Acts, chapter 2. We're going to read verses 40 through 47. This is at the end of uh, Peter's sermon in Jerusalem that he's giving. Uh, as he is uh, preaching at Pentecost, there has been a call to repentance and faith given to all those that are there. There's been the pointing out of the reality and the truth of the covenantal promise for all of the folks that are there. That covenantal promise coming from uh, the Old Testament quoted by Peter, where he reminds them that it is for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord your God calls to himself. And then we get to our portion now. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing to the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Well, this is one of several of the study passages that's down below in the description area. I hope you'll actually take some time to, to read all of chapter 2 using uh, the link that's provided in the description. You might get a greater context and be blessed uh, as you read Peter's sermon and as you hear from, from God as he speaks. Well, these study passages, as I remind you each uh, daily devotion, uh, they are the infrastructure, they are the skeleton, they are the framing that brings us our theology portion each devotion. And for today's devotion, we're turning to Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 25, and we're going to read section 4. Now, we've read this a few times in our theology portions recently, and the word Catholic comes up dealing with the church. And before I read, I just want to point out, I haven't yet, uh, Catholic means universal. So we're talking about the universal church, the church across the, uh, the earth. All right, so I just want to make that clear as we dive in so you don't get confused. This Catholic church hath been sometimes more and sometimes less visible. In particular churches, which are members thereof, are more or less pure, according as the doctrine of the gospel is taught and embraced, ordinances administered, and public worship performed more or less purely in them. We come back to our question, what are the, uh, 
identifying marks of Christ's church. What are the things that we see, even as we read here, is the visible church is sometimes uh, more and less visible. We know that through church history. We can see that even in the world today. Certain places there's been a growth and is more visible. Other places there's been a, a reduction. Overall, thankfully, by God's grace, His church is continuing to grow and grow. Uh, and then, of course, there's the, the purity of the local congregation, and that's based upon these identifying marks that uh, we see laid out here. Uh, we saw them in our reading in Acts chapter 2. There are uh, These are the, the initial marks that are important. And just to kick off our discussion here, I'm going to read from our friend Chad Van Dixhorn, Confessing the Faith commenting on this. What is true of the universal church is also sometimes true of local congregations. Particular churches, which are members of the universal church, are more or less pure depending on the relative purity of the gospel taught and embraced in those churches, the way in which they dispense the sacraments, and the manner and conduct of their public worship. In fact, the Westminster Assembly was willing to calibrate the purity of a church based on the relative purity of these three marks of a a church. That the proper administration of the sacraments also includes church discipline is evident from the fact that the assembly here cites two scriptural passages that treat the subject of sin in churches. One passage, 1 Corinthians 5, 6, 7, is a classic text for church discipline where the Apostle Paul urges the Corinthian church to expel a person from the church for sexual misconduct. The other text, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, shows the necessity of discipline since churches frequently tolerated error to their eventual detriment or, dis- or demise, as in the case of some of the seven churches in Asia minor. So we have, uh, coming out of the Reformation, these marks of the church that have been identified, and there's there's three that are agreed upon, and we see them uh, in our theology portion here, and, and that's the preaching of the gospel, the, uh, the pure biblical gospel being preached, uh, the proper and right administration of the sacraments, uh, the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, uh, and uh, also uh, the discipline in the church. Uh, We see here, those are the three most common seen marks that come out of the Reformation. Um, Those are evident here, though discipline is not mentioned. uh, We can understand that because it refers to the the sacraments being properly administered, and the Bible's clear that uh, discipline is involved in that process. Um, we have added here in the Westminster uh, public worship performed more or less purely in them. That is a true and, and right mark of the church. Uh, so that brings us to four. And then a fifth mark, uh, which I, we see in Acts, along with these other four we've already mentioned, that section we read, it's also when you read um, one of uh, my descendants, Uh, well, I guess I would be his descendant, (laughs) one of my ancestors, uh, that uh, I am related to through my mother's side of the line, John Knox, and others in the Scottish Reformation wrote much about uh, in the the Presbyterian Church and the understanding of the work of the diaconate, the deacons, there was much written about uh, the importance of the care for the poor in a congregation, but also in the parish or the local area, the community around a church. So we see that also in Acts 2. Uh, of course, there's a lot going on there. This is not a, uh, some sort of uh, early proto-socialism uh, or communism. There's a giving up and selling of property because there's an understanding of there has been the end of the old covenant age, the Old Testament age, there is no more reason to continue to uh, move uh, the keeping of family property as the Old Covenant Church uh, has done its job in maintaining the oracles of God in preparation for the Messiah. The Messiah is now here and in the New Covenant Uh, you see God's people no longer bound primarily to one location, one nation, but now God's people, the elect, are uh, being called and saved uh, 
by God from all tribes, tongues, and nations. But we we are getting long on time. We could go uh, quite a while talking about that. Just wanted to point that out so there's no confusion. But don't miss the aspect that when they're selling this, they're making this point that they're then taking care of everyone within that is in need in the covenant community. Uh, they're taking care of the needs. They're looking after the poor. Uh, and then that gets developed. And we see it throughout the scriptures. There is that. So those are, are five primary uh, marks of the church. Those are ways you can look at a church and say that is a church of Christ. You start off with the preaching of the gospel, the handling of God's word. Is it accurate? Is it biblical? And then from there we see the handling of the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Is it biblical? Uh, we see church discipline, which is clear throughout Scripture, is uh, something that is required and is important for the church. It's purity for Christ's honor, but it is important uh, also for individual Christians. And it is something that uh, King Jesus wants for his people because he loves us. Uh, then we see the purity of worship as the Bible teaches how we should worship. And then, of course, again, we mention uh, the generosity, the caring of the poor, led by the deacons and diaconate, uh, who were given the charge to uh, encourage and to uh, stir up the generosity of God's people in that way. So we've gone a little long today as we're touching on a few of these things. Hopefully the Lord has blessed you through this and, and helped you to think a little bit about these marks. You might be able to critically look uh, in a way around you and see where these marks are, are landing and, and where some, uh, some organizations are missing these marks. And by God's grace, there will be reformation uh, for them and uh, revival. The Lord might bring them to a a distinctly biblical marks of Christ's church. Well, much to wrestle with, much to think about, much to be thankful for. Oh Lord, we, we love you, and we're so thankful that you have given the gift of your church, that you have called us out of spiritual death, and you have brought us into union with Christ through the indwelling Spirit who brings us into your fellowship, Father. Lord, we pray these marks of the church, that you would cause them to exist and be clear in all of your church. Lord, help us. Uh, we know that the church, depending on location and time, has been uh, more visible, less visible. We pray that it would be more and more visible. Lord, we know that your church is in local congregations has been more and less pure. We pray that it would be more pure by your grace. You would do these things to your glory and for our benefit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's great to be with you for another devotion. Until we are together again, may our great God bless and keep you.